<clears throat> mm hmm. Okay. So, what do we need here? First of all, balance of time, balance with rollout, and understanding of the proper progression. Hey, so I was talking to someone today, and they said that they tried the roll-in movement, but it kind of messed up their playing a little bit and they had a hard time backtracking to get to their normal setup. And as we explored what happened in this, um, and as we explored what had happened for them, it became clear that they weren't practicing a whole lot and that the roll-in movement, the squeak or the squeal, that approach was more of their practice time. It was an out of balance ratio that just took them away from their normal way of playing and then created confusion. So I'm gonna clear up a couple things about how to balance this in your practice time and balance the range of motion as well. And finding balance is something that's incredibly important for us as horn players. So first of all, depending on how much you practice, you should only be doing these kinds of indirect physiotherapy type movements as a small proportion of your practice time. So imagine that if you only spent 10 minutes a day walking and you spent eight minutes of that doing funky exercises to teach you to walk differently, you might get confused. You wanna have a small proportion of your time. So if you're only practicing a few times a week, you should really only be doing the roll-in for maybe 30 seconds or a minute of explorations if your entire practice session is going to be 30 to 60 minutes. The rest of the time should just be spent on normal stuff. So that's one piece around balance. Don't go hog wild on roll-in and squealing and squeaking if you're not going hog wild on horn playing in general. Now, the other piece to consider is that roll in must be balanced with roll out. Roll in and roll out. So we wanna move through the full range of motion whenever we're training or else we're gonna get really out of balance and confused. So an easy way to do that that I have in nearly all of my practice along videos, my free 25 minute high range workout is to move the lips between the range of motion. And you can do that while we talk right now. In fact, just kind of moving everything is a really good idea. And you can do it in the car, you can do it in the bathroom, you know, you can do it anywhere. You don't have to do it during horn practice. But to be able to do that means that you can play the absolute lowest notes or the absolute highest notes, you know, and not get super weird or stuck or anything like that. Still have a comfortable mid-range. The final piece to understand is that there is a progression from being able to roll in to being able to squeak, to being able to squeak well in the center of the aperture. That requires understanding all of these different little muscles and how to kind of zip lock the lips together. That takes time. And then from squeaking, to getting it on the horn, which is called squealing, and then from squealing to integrating that into the full range of motion and starting to drag the squeal down, starting to drag the roll up, the roll out up into the range, integrate the range of motion. And there's a whole sequence of exercises and you know anatomical explorations and embodied understandings 
that also go along with progressive relaxation training, progressive imagination and musicianship training, and mindset changes and emotional transformation of letting go of stuck emotions and limiting beliefs. All of that needs to come together in order to really create a true shift in your high range and in your entire horn playing. So if you're not on a path of like the rocket ship, like I'm going to solve this in a number of weeks, like I'm going to solve it this year, this next half of the year, I want this badly, but you're just kind of curious or dabbling or just trying to make some small improvements to your high range make sure that you practice in balance. That's totally valid. Not everybody needs to be racing towards the mastery of the high range. Maybe that's not for you right now. If it is, you know, come talk to me about the high range magic program. That can get you there really rapidly. But if it's not for you, then you should just be doing little, little experiments. Just play with the range of motion. Do some of my free exercises like the 25 minute high range workout every now and then and just work it into your playing a little bit in balance honor that the progression the progress is going to be much 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 slower you might stick with one element like just away from the horn moving the lips for a month and then for the next month you might just spend a week uh, for the next month you might just spend a minute like that just having the horn sitting on rolled in lips without doing anything and just breathing through the nose. And the next month you might try and play some notes like that, right? You need to adjust the speed of your progress to the overall velocity and kind of momentum of your horn playing in general. So I hope that that's helpful. And if you have any questions about how to do that, comment. And uh, thanks for being part of this group. <laughs>